All right. So up next we have Steve and we have Lou coming up to read for us a story about Duke Boy. Again? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, right. That's what? You never heard of this story? Like This is where it is. Yee! 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 I want to introduce myself. This is Mr. Prissy Fan, first Prince of Mr. Fifth 2023. And this right here is the Prince of Performance, Boon Nguyen. And we're here to read Chukui, that is Moon Boy. Yeah. Let's start reading, bro. All right. Let's start, or you want me to start? Hey, hey. Chukui, the man in the moon. Long, long ago, a poor woodcutter named Jukui lived in a humble bamboo but beside the jungle. Every day, he carried his axe into the woods, uh, small trees, and gathered dry sticks. Then Jukui would tie them all into bundles and carry them home on the ends of a long wooden pole that he balanced on his shoulder. Because Chukui was poor, he could not afford an ox to pull his wood cart to market. So he would walk all the way to town dragging the heavy load himself. One day, while chopping wood in the jungle, he came across three tiger's cubs frolicking and wrestling in a clearing. Their mother had there and left them there while she hunted for food. If I can catch one of those cubs, Chukui thought, I can sell it for a great price and buy an ox. Quietly, he laid down his bundle and crept toward the playful cubs. He hid behind a fallen log until one of the cubs rolled right up next to him. With a shout, he grabbed it by the back of the neck to keep it from biting and scratching. When the other two cubs saw what happened to their brothers, they stopped fighting and scrambled away, crying and whimpering. Just as Jukui started to walk away with the squirming tiger cub, he heard a great roar. He turned around and saw the mother tiger who just dropped a limpid deer at her feet. Hey, so what happened, Boone? Do you know what's next? Right here, pal. Hey, 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 I got you. I got you, dog. With a scream, Jukui scrambled up a tree with a tiger with the tiger cub in his hand. But with the tiger cub wriggling out of his grasp and landed very hard on the ground. Jukui watched the mother tiger trot to an old twisted bayan tree growing near a bubbling steam stream. She tore some of the leaves off the tree and chewed them up. Then she returned to the motionless cub, placed the chewed leaves on his head. It's like a band-aid. <laughs> With an angry growl, the baby tiger leaped to his feet and began chasing his tail. Chasing the tail of the nearest brother he had. Started chasing the tail of the nearest brother as if nothing had ever happened. The mother licked the cub, then led her family to the deer, and then, and then they began to cat. After the family of the tiger left, Jukui climbed down from the tree and walked to the bubbling stream. He plucked a few leaves from the ancient bayan tree and sniffed them. They smelled the same as any other bayan leaves. He said, 
aloud, maybe the tiger cub was only stunned. Maybe, perhaps, he would have gotten up anyways. But just in case, I'll put some of these leaves in my pocket and study them closer when I get home. Jukui gathered up an axe and started back. As Jukui treaded down the dusty road that led to his hut, he saw a small dead dog lying in the ditch. Aww. A dead dog, oh, poor puppy. He knew that the dog belonged to the son of another woodcutter and that the boy would have been broken hearted. Remembering what he had seen what the mother tiger did, Jukui chewed up some bayan leaves and carried it in his pocket. He placed the mixture on the head of the dog. With a yelp, the dog bounced up on his feet, licked Jukui's hand, and ran down to the path just as good as new. The dog came back to life. It is an enchanted tree indeed, Jukui cried out. And as fast as his feet would carry him, he ran home and got some digging tools. He returned to the stream in the jungle and uprooted the bayan tree and he brought it home. He dug a deep hole wide for the, enough for the tree, even though it meant destroying the melon patch and cabbages that he made for the trees. My cabbages! <laughs> even though it meant destroying the melon patch and cabbages, he made room for the bayan tree. Jukui took great care of the tree, treating it, it with respect and kindness, it flourished and it grew stronger. For weeks later, before the, the Lunar New Year celebration, Jukui set off to town loaded with bundles of wood and tree branches covered with delicate pink peach blossoms and some bright yellow huamai flowers. He hoped to sell a lot of um, wood in the marketplace because everyone would be cooking lavish meals and for the long festival. Mmm, yummy. I'm hungry. He waved to the women who were on their knees carefully pulling weeds and clearing away dirt from the tombs of their ancestors to make way for the spirits that always return to the earth. From that, during that, Jukui nodded to his friends he hadn't seen for so long. Hi friends. Hi. As they returned to the village, not to his friends he hadn't seen so long as he returned as they returned to the village of their birth. Jukui loved this time of year not just because he sold a lot of wood but because people were always so joyful. As he came to town he expected to see villagers dressed in the finest cloth and jewelry. He expected to see children playing games and singing songs with their visiting cousins. But as he walked down the silent street, he saw many faces, sad faces. He stopped beside an old man with a white beard who was decorating his front door with red good luck banners. Excuse me, honorable uncle. Why are you, is everyone so sad during the season of joy? The frail old man removed his small black hat and whipped his brow before pointing up the towards the east. Okay. As you may know, he said, over the, that mountain lives the great lord who owns most of the land in this region. He has a beautiful and gentle daughter, Nguyen Bing whose favorite pastime is planting lovely flowers over the land. Yes, I have seen her from afar. I have heard of her great beauty and gentle nature. But why is everyone sad? Jukui asked again, because this lovely girl now lies on her bed, so all of that she is not expected to live through death. Although her father owns land as far as the eye can see, and gold and precious gems, all the riches in the world cannot make her well. Every day she slips deeper and deeper into a dark, endless sleep. When Jukui heard the awful news, he was greatly disturbed. 
What a terrible loss if the Lord's daughter should die. Oh no. Ever since Jukui had found the magic banger tree, he carried a few leaves in his pocket in case he came across a wounded animal or a sick friend. Also, he found that the leaves cured the little cuts and bruises that woodcutters so often get while chopping wood. So Jukui laid down his bundles of sticks and flowers and set out for the great lord's palace. He walked all day and finally arrived very tired and covered with dust. He was such a sight in his bare feet and ragged clothes that the guards at the palace gates refused to let him in. Over and over, he tried to convince them that he could cure the Lord's daughter. Be gone, be gone! A guard said, shoving him so hard that Jukui tumbled down the steps and cut his foot. Ah, oh, jeez. Jukui removed a small banger leaf, chewed it, and then placed it on his foot. Foot. Instantly, the bleeding stopped and the wound healed over. A moment later, his foot locked it looked as if he had never been cut. The surprised guards looked at each other and they quickly helped Jukui to his feet and led him into a chamber of the Lord's daughter. Jukui took a deep breath when he saw how beautiful Nguyen was. Ooh, gorgeous! But her face was very pale, and she could hardly breathe. Jukui took the rest of the banger leaves from his pocket and break them into small pieces. He placed them gently on the girl's tongue. In a moment, the color began to return to her cheeks. She opened her eyes and smiled at her father, who stood nearby. Her father threw his arm around Jukui, weeping for joy. Woodcutter, you have saved my daughter's life! For your good deed, I grant you her hand in marriage and some of my richest lands. The Lord instructed his men to give Jukui a bag of gold so he could build a proper house for his new bride. What's next, pal? Jukui built a lovely house at the same spot where his bamboo hut had stood, being very careful not to disturb the magic banyan tree. By now, it twisted its, its twisted roots had sunk deep into the soil into his courtyard. When the house was ready, Dukoi brought his new bride to live with him. As soon as Wen Ting settled, she began planting her favorite flowers. She planted pink and white peony bushes and sweet orchid vines. She planted lotuses in the fish pond and jasmine around the walls and the fragrant ginger too. Jukui loved his new wife dearly and allowed her to plant flowers everywhere with one exception. You must never plant flowers around the banyan tree. He told her the first day she arrived, you must never disturb the roots or something terrible might happen. But the rest of the grounds are free for you to landscape and do as you choose. It's like his man cave. What? Wen Ding agreed. But after two months of only one spot left unplanted was the patch of earth around the banyan tree. Uh-oh. What am I to do? Wen Ding thought to herself. She said one day as she stood, as she stood with a handful of fresh tubbers that a friend from the south had brought with her. These dahlias are my favorite, but there's only one place left to plant them, but it's forbidden. Surely my kind, my husband won't mind if I plant my stuff in that patch of grass. I know I can dig very carefully and not disturb the banyan tree's roots. Although Jukui now had enough gold to buy anything he needed and had a fancy house. He was still a simple woodcutter at heart. He missed roaming around the jungle to gather wood and seeing the animals play. 
So often, Jukui walked into the forest just to be alone and enjoy the nature and play his bamboo flute. While Jukui was trolling in the jungle, Wing Ting decided that she would plant the new Dahlia tumbers under the Bayan tree. Very carefully, she dug into the earth, but suddenly her shovel slipped and she cut one of the tree's roots in half. <gasps> Oh no! In the picture right here. So Win Ting was digging and she accidentally cut into the root of the Bayan tree. Win Ting jumped back and screamed in fright as the big tree growled. <laughs> oh my god, the tree's alive. It swayed from side to side and slowly pulling up its roots and one after the other and started climbing into the evening sky where the full moon was rising. When Juku heard, Juku heard his wife's screams, he came running back to the house. Just as he reached the courtyard, he saw the last root coming out of the soil. With a shout, he grabbed the root and tried to pull the tree back down. But my, the mighty Bayan tree was very strong. Jukui clung to the root with all his might as the tree climbed higher and higher into the cloudless sky. Far below, he saw his sweeping wife, weeping wife in the courtyard, growing smaller and smaller. Then he saw the village looking like a cluster of dots as the tree continued to ro soar upwards. It crossed into the heavens past the stars and soon came to rest on the moon. There it sank its roots into the soft yellow moon dust. To this day, if you look very hard on a bright moonlit lit day, on a bright moonlight moonlit night, you may just be able to see, make out the figure of Jukui sitting under the banyan tree where his flute, with his flute, there, he looks down on earth and wonders how he's going to get back home. Ooh. The tale of Jukui is a favorite story told on the night of Det Jungpu, or the moon festival, which occurs in early autumn when the golden harvest moon hangs in the sky. At dusk, children light candles inside colorful lanterns and made of thin rice paper and bamboo. Being ever so careful not to let the lanterns catch on fire, the children march in a lantern parade, sing songs, children also fly kites and watch puppet shows. Afterward, they indulge in special rice desserts called moon cakes or eat fried watermelon seeds accompanied by hot jasmine tea. Outside under the full moon, children then gather around their grandmothers and listen to fairy tales. Then, the Lunar New Year celebration mentioned in this story is the most celebration in Vietnam. Occurring between mid-January to mid-February, that signifies the arrival of spring. The festival lasts two weeks with pre preparary, preparations beginning many days before the actual New Year's Day. It is a time of visiting families and friends, giving gifts, eating long, long dish, meals and clearing up all debts and worries so much that the coming year will start out right. Peach blossoms, yellow huamai blooms, and many miniature orange trees are as traditional to Vietnamese as Christmas trees are to Americans. Many people also hang red paper banners with holiday greetings written on the them in the ancient Vietnamese Junum characters that closely resemble Chinese writing. Banner trees are members of the fig, fig tree family and grow in many parts of Asia and India. Their roots appear to grow above the ground in a tangled mass. But in reality, the tree branches sent down runners that attach to the ground and for new trunks, very old banyard tree have so many roots and branches that they look like a small groove. And that's how the story is. Yeet!